All right, guys, so we're gonna take a road trip. We're gonna drive from Michigan to Florida. And I wanna see exactly what the experience is gonna be like, cause this is gonna be the furthest drive I've ever done in a Tesla. Uh, recently I went to New York, went to Toronto, and that was actually a really good experience for me. Like I like driving, so it's not that big of a deal. And for me, I've been on over a hundred flights in the past year. So I think it's time to take a longer road trip cause I do plan on staying in Florida a little bit longer this time. So currently this is the setup that we have. We got the Sony a7 IV and a, I think 14 millimeter 1.4 G Master lens. We're gonna go ahead and uh tampa florida is gonna be the one and as you guys can see we got one two three four five six seven eight actually eight stops on the way with our first stop obviously in ohio so let's go ahead and kick this thing off i want to show you guys we're in a model y brand new model y which we'll talk about here in a second but let's get the road trip going so I'm not wasting any more time. So our first supercharger is two hours away in Ohio. And I want to talk about the Tesla Model Y here for a second. So if you guys remember, when I first started the channel, I purchased a Tesla Model 3 Performance, which was absolutely amazing. But it was kind of just, I don't know, too small for me. The overall experience with the car so far has been great for me. I'm obviously going to do a full review on this once we get to maybe, I don't know, 6,000 miles, 10,000 miles, something like that. The overall experience, it is exactly what pretty much Elon said it's about 10 or 15 percent bigger than the model 3 now it is a performance model so this one's 0 to 60 I think it's 3.5 seconds I believe and then the model 3 performance that I had was 3.1 seconds 0 to 60 now for me it's still fast enough obviously I want to plaid but I think I'm gonna wait until the spring so I'm gonna drive this around for a little bit just to see how I like it and then if I want to I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a plaid model s a few other key upgrades that I noticed also in between this and my Model 3 performance was obviously the much more pleasant dashboard here along with uh, the center console. It does have, you know, two more larger charging pads. With the Model 3 performance that I had, it did not have the wireless charging yet. I don't believe the wireless charging. And it wasn't USB-C. And then when I would go ahead and plug it in, I'd have to disconnect my USB drive that was using the Sentry mode to record any video. So this time around, they give you the USB drive. It's in the glove box, which is much more convenient. You got two USB type C ports in here, I believe. And then you also have two spots for your phone, which by the way, you guys know I have the iPhone 13, iPhone 14 Pro, and then the S22 Ultra by Samsung. So a larger phone does fit very well and it does charge pretty decent, but I also have a fast charger here that is connected to a anchor, um, through a cigarette lighter or whatever it's called. So this time around, no gloss on the interior, and then you also have no chrome on the outside, which was a huge thing for me. I think that was a absolutely disgusting look. Didn't look right. I like how they blacked out everything. It just gives it a much more simplistic, cleaner look, and I'm glad that Tesla went ahead and did that. So far, I really like the white interior on this. I had the black interior before. It didn't really look that good for me, along with the brown. So I'm a carbon fiber type guy, so carbon fiber along with white looks really nice now if you guys can see the trip here it says 16 hours and five minutes from here from michigan to tampa so that obviously does not include the stops that we're going to have to make at the supercharging stations to juice up or any breaks that i might take along the way also by the way we have a stopwatch going so as you guys can see here so far we're at just under 11 minutes into the trip we're gonna see how long it's gonna take me to get there with all of my brakes and times we stop at the supercharging station. Okay. All right, so we just got to the first supercharger here in Finlay, Ohio. And if you guys remember earlier, we discussed how some of these supercharging stations are always almost pretty much full. And at this particular one, we have the same case scenario here because one of these superchargers is actually not working. Oh, I absolutely hate the cold because of this reason. So there isn't exactly anything healthy to eat in there. So I'm just gonna wait. But this also brings up a good point that I wanted to mention for you guys. If you have a 2022, 2023, if you're thinking about picking one up, Model 3 or Model Y, they no longer have the sensors in the front and rear of the vehicle. On my previous model, it told me I was 20 inches away from hitting something of me or behind me it does not yeah hi to you too youtuber they don't have the sensors anymore so before it would tell you hey you're 20 inches from hitting this garbage can now 
Good luck. Oh my god, it's so depressing and cold here. Now most people use the front of their Tesla for groceries, stuff like that. Your boy actually went ahead and loaded it up with Celsius, smart water, peanut butter, and protein shakes. To continue our trip, and it looks like our next stop is going to be in Cincinnati, Ohio at 7 o'clock. It is Saturday, <laughs> and I'm absolutely freezing. Now, we obviously talked about the costs associated with supercharging, like say at this first station, but let's talk about the overall cost of actually owning a Tesla. Now for me, I'll give you guys a perfect example. I put 95,000 miles, 95, just over 95,000 miles on my Model 3 Performance and that was over a two, two and a half year period. The only expenses I really had in that time frame, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, was windshield washer fluid and I went through two sets of Performance tires. That was pretty much it. So if you factor in the cost of tires, I think it was 1,500 bucks each time so three thousand dollars total for tires and then i don't know maybe five gallons of windshield washer fluid over a two-year span so what do you get about 30 bucks there so just over three thousand dollars to own a model 3 performance all right guys here's another instance which is very frustrating for me i don't have the autopilot engaged yet i'm going to turn it on right now and i want you guys to see it's not really raining and it's not really snowing and the wiper blades come on and you cannot turn them off. Now we're heading towards our second supercharger station which is in Florence, Kentucky. We're about to go ahead and cross here into Kentucky and as you can see it's got a gray timer on it which means that that supercharging station is busy with other vehicles currently at the moment. As I mentioned earlier, we're back at a supercharger station that's in a Myers parking lot, which most of them that I've experienced have been in Myers. Uh, we have a Chick-fil-A and a couple other spots here, as you guys can see, I'll show you. Texas Roadhouse, there's a ton of places you can go ahead and eat, and um, it's always typically in a decent spot. Chick-fil-A probably being the best one. Oh. Yuck. There's always that weird walk. For Tesla owners, you guys know what I'm talking about. There's always that weird walk to where people are like, where's this guy even coming from? You know, I can say with confidence, this is my first time I've walked through a drive-thru. I forget how sweet and genuine people are down here towards the south. If you've never experienced it, how would you know? Just a random thought I was thinking about. But we went with grilled nuggets, grilled wrap, and three chicken tenders. I can't tell you the last time I've had Chick-fil-A. It's been a minute. Now here's something else I also want you guys to notice here as we're wrapping up at this second supercharger station. If you look at the actual stops that we have here, you can see that you average about two and a half hours, two to two and a half hours in between each stop. As you guys can see here, 10.30, 12.30, I mean two hours, then you got three, so about two and a half. And then we got about three hours here between this one and then Again, about two hours. These are a little bit more gradual, as you can see, only stopping for 30 or 40 minutes in between both of these. With every stop that you're gonna need to make here, you're stopping for 30 or 40 minutes at each one of these locations, which doesn't make it that convenient. Now, typically, I'd probably stop every three or four hours, use the bathroom, something like that, eat, whatever the case may be. This particular scenario, you're stopping a little bit more, but it's not an absorbent amount of stops. Seven or eight stops at 20 minutes, 30 minutes, sometimes 40 minutes per stop. You're spending four hours of your trip charging your vehicle. So if it's a 16 hour trip, like we discussed earlier, straight through with a gas powered vehicle, if you're driving an electric vehicle and you have to stop, you're spending an extra four hours on that trip. Wrapping up at this one, we're at $24.33 for 286 miles of range. Alrighty guys, supercharging station number three. This one's a little bit different. It's got actually drive up superchargers like this where people are parked in front and behind each other, which is pretty cool. If you're driving 
anything over 10, 12 hours, you're gonna stop and you're gonna take breaks, you're gonna need to sleep, right? So on a trip like this, where it's maybe say, I don't know, you have a 16 hour drive, guess what? Some people after 10 or 12 hours are gonna stop and they're gonna sleep for six or eight hours. Technically that 16 hour trip, even if you were to drive straight through, right? You'd probably most likely stop and sleep somewhere anyway. Obviously I'm not bailing out Tesla here out of the you know three or four hours extra that you're spending charging your vehicle. But the point I'm trying to make is you're gonna stop and you're gonna sleep, right? Regardless, I've drove straight through every single time I've drove to Florida. Will I do that this time? Maybe, maybe not, it just depends on how I feel. These 20 or 30 minutes, if you stop and take a nap each one of those times, you know, you might not be as tired and it would obviously be a lot more safe for you to drive that way. We're coming up on Knoxville, which is, I don't know, about 60 miles away. I only have to stop here for about 35 minutes this previous charge, I got a little nap. And um, once we pull up here, we'll be through Tennessee and then our next stop will be Georgia, believe it or not. All right, guys, so we're in Knoxville, Tennessee. It is 1.05 a.m. currently. Let's actually go ahead and check the stopwatch. We're at currently, so 10 hours and 30 minutes, and we're in Knoxville, Tennessee from the suburbs of Detroit. And currently, this is our fourth charge. So, so far, if we add everything up, we're almost at 100 bucks. We spent almost $100 to get to Knoxville, Tennessee after four charges, so just under $100. Next, we're heading towards Adairsville, Georgia, which is about, I don't know, 45 minutes outside of Atlanta. It does say, though, that when we get to Adairsville, we'll have 30% charge left, which so far, by the way, guys, even with the cold weather has been pretty accurate. It's been within a couple percent points. Oh, I wish five guys was open. Next stop, GA. And here we are headed back up the mountain. We're headed towards Chattanooga right now and we're getting some snow. Another great news, you can see all of the faults that I have now for no apparent reason whatsoever. Lane departure, not available. Cruise control, disabled. Stability control, disabled. Everything that you would want, automatic emergency brake disabled. Everything that you possibly want and need when up a mountain, I do not have. All right, so now we're in a full blown snowstorm and I have all of these system faults. Merry Christmas. All right, guys, so it's now 4.15 a.m. We're at our fifth charging station in, the fuck am I? Adairsville, Georgia. There's a Waffle House next door. And I haven't had a Waffle House in like 10 years. But at the same time, the supercharger is pretty sketch. Some sussery going on here. There's all these superchargers right next to the forest. Literally Bigfoot could come out at any second. So I'm hesitant to walk along this tree line all the way down to Waffle House. I just, I don't think I'm at the point in my life where the waffles are worth the risk at this point. On the road again. Yeah. At least we're not by the forest again. So this will be our sixth charge, but at the same time, it's also only a 20 minute charge. So it's a lot better in these longer instances to where you stop every hour or two this way. The battery is almost at like, I don't know, under a hundred miles. So it charges a lot faster because if you stay the full time, say 40, 50 minutes, it's only gonna get slower the more full the battery gets. So it makes more sense to do the charging in 20 or 30 minute increments. So this will be charge number six. Alrighty guys, 7.30 in the morning. Oh my God, stop number seven. This is a quick one, I think it's only like 15, 20 minutes. But we're in Mactown, Georgia. Oh my God. We got a Panera behind me right here. Ugh. After this, we got one last stop before we're in Florida. And then from there, it's like, I think one more stop until we get to Tampa. I might extend the trip and end up in Sarasota. Make this like a 24 hour straight Tesla road trip. That'd be cool. It is 8.45 in the morning. We have about an hour and 15 minutes until we get to Valdosta, Valdosta. The sun is out for the first time. I can't remember the last time I saw the sun and all the faults that were on the car in Tennessee magically disappeared. So there's your update. Everything's better 
when you get to warmer climate. We're at 18 hours, 11 minutes, and 45 seconds. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. Now, the overall experience as far as driving the vehicle was very smooth and very comfortable, a lot more comfortable than my Model 3. If you're a larger person, taller person, I would highly suggest you guys go for the Model Y instead of the Model 3. That's my personal opinion. Coming from someone who owned a Model 3 for almost 100,000 miles, it's much more comfortable, you have much more room. It just, it makes much more sense, especially if you have a family or you like traveling a lot. I remember my first drive to Florida, I was like 18 years old. I had my sister's like uh, Jeep Liberty at the time. Talk about a rough ride. And that ride took me like, I wanna say it was like 18 hours, 19 hours, first time. I was, like, I was a teenager, I was 18 years old. So fast forward now, here we are, 13 years later, whatever it is, driving a Model Y Performance. It's much, much more comfortable. And the technology that you have is just, it's, it's next level, you know what I mean? All right guys, last stop, Georgia. Oh my God, it's like 52 degrees. It's 52 degrees, I can actually function. Chicken tenders and mac and cheese. Alrighty guys, final charging station is here in Ocala, Florida, which is I don't know, about 45 minutes, 50 minutes without any traffic from, uh, oh, look at the palm trees, ooh. Oh man, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry. I just drove like, let's check. There we go, 22 hour, uh, 23 hour, heading on 23 hours. But it's like 67 degrees right now. I'm gonna actually extend the trip a little bit. I'm gonna end up in Sarasota like I mentioned earlier. So maybe I'll drive an extra hour and then I'll give you guys my conclusion on what I think so far. This being my first actual long Tesla road trip without stopping. I have a ton of thoughts that I want to share with you guys, and I really appreciate you guys coming along the way with me. If you guys are enjoying the video so far, make sure you guys do subscribe, smash that like button for me, and let's continue. I didn't hit traffic until I got to Florida. I'd say even when I got to Ocala, I hit some traffic, and then this rush hour traffic right now. That's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty smooth, so. I stand by my recommendation of leaving at 2 or 3 p.m. in the afternoon and driving overnight when there's no traffic. Guys, you have to see this. Look at this sunset we have over here what a perfect way to end this 24-hour tesla road trip i mean look at this range is still an issue for longer longer drives like this one i feel like if it had maybe 375 to 450 miles of range the overall experience would be that much better i stopped eight eight and a half times from the suburbs of Detroit down to which we're here in Sarasota right now actually and I charged eight and a half times so I'm probably gonna charge one more time on the way to Miami but I think I'm gonna stay here for today and then tomorrow I might head down to Miami I wasn't even planning on making this honestly until one of my friends was like dude just make a 24-hour road trip you're gonna drive that far anyway so why not do it right so I'm glad I did I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you guys go ahead and smash that like button for me subscribe let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next episode. Peace.